We'll now turn to Ranking Member Braun. What we've just been hearing here is just uh, what I like about a committee like this. You're hearing a broad array of uh, viewpoints. Um, I've healthcare has been something I wrestled with long ago um, in the whole spectrum from uh, early childhood through when you're needing to look at how you're going to spend your last years. It's been cloaked behind closed doors. Uh, large insurance companies and hospitals where we spend most of our money on the way to maybe a nursing home, assisted living, or if you're lucky enough to live it out in your own abode, uh, it's got to be swamped with transparency and to where we can see Mrs. Uh, Vessenmeyer's story. How can something like that happen? Uh, and that was in Virginia uh, when we're hearing $3,800 a month in Nebraska. Every state's going to have a different cost of living, a different cost structure. But that idea, Mr. Mollett, of uh, a transparency portal and at least some things that are going to make it easier to shine the light on issues that are out there. To me, when you're against that, you're just trying to hide something. And uh, for instance, on the bigger picture, and this is an interesting combination of individuals, myself, Senator Sanders, Senator Grassley, Senator Smith, Senator Hickenlooper. That's two Republicans, three Democrats. I've been working on this since I've been in the Senate. Competition and transparency if you want to be in the biggest part of our economy, health care, and especially at the tail end of our lives, be out there, be open. Um, Ms. Simpkins, I was wondering, because you've done a good job, and like Senator Fetterman said, your payor is coming through either state, federal governments, and you're aimed at low income. Um, what is your cost, roughly, to do what you're doing? Uh, across those five states? Because we heard 3,800 here. I just asked my staff, so maybe closer to 4,500 in Indiana per month. What are you finding? Uh, you're servicing low-income uh, residents. Uh, what's that cost structure look like? Um, thank you for the question, um, Ranking Member Braun. I'm, I'm trying to, to that would just mean in terms of your, you have a business yes. without giving any trade secrets away, what does it roughly cost in those states to provide a service? Your payor is mostly from government. In the case over here, uh, didn't have that advantage and you saw what happened. And that was in a state like Virginia, which I would have thought would have been maybe moderate on costs. Yep. The, the thing I'm struggling with, it's, um, and I certainly agree with the transparency. Those are things that we're going to be showing all the conversations here today of, of um, you know, the cost of care, making sure there's no hidden fees. The the expense side, the, what I'm struggling with is the expense side really depends on the state in which you're in. And I'd certainly be willing to. Well, let's a, just a pick Indiana then Indi to keep it simple. Indiana. And then what do you charge the governments that end up paying you mostly? I'm, I'm going to get an idea of what the variation is in cost across this country. Okay. And then that whoever's in any component of health care should be always willing to make it easy for us to understand. And on health care that leads up to assisted living or nursing homes, it's terrible. And in my own business, I tried to create health care consumers so you can actually manage your own well-being. And even when I attempted it, it wasn't easy, but we did it. Okay. I thank you for the clarity. Um, the cost of care, if we were looking at Indiana specifically, and um, I think the best best gauge is probably in our operating margin because the cost of care of an insurance and workforce and the insurance costs have gone up 15, 20%. And sometimes that's, you know, it's a little bit higher in a, you know, an and you can give me a range rural. too. It I can give you a range. To. Yeah. So the, the operating margins are going to be, you know, roughly between like 20 and 28%. When everything's considered, that's also a, a debt load. Well, that's operating margins. I'm talking about what the government yeah, I, ends up paying for per month. Um, you know. I'd be glad to send that to you, Senator Brown. But you can get I, that to me. Yeah, and I, I don't, don't have that. I don't belabor have the, the point, but just yes. the difficulty of this, and you guys are doing a, a good job by all standards. I, We've yeah. got to have transparency across the spectrum of health care. And uh, when you get to the tail end of life, I think it's uh, as important as it is along the way. And until the industry and everyone in healthcare embraces 
transparency and competition, don't be surprised if there's going to be more of an interest to show how to do it from the federal level. And I'm a believer that that generally isn't necessarily the solution. It can end up even costing more. But unless you at least embrace what's done in all other industries, which is make it easy for people that want to buy your services, know what it's going to cost, uh, embrace competition, don't try to keep people out of the business, uh, you're never going to find solutions in healthcare. It's now up to 20% of our GDP, and as recently as three, four decades ago, it was only 5% of our GDP. It's breaking the bank, even through the programs we offer here that elderly depend on, Medicare and Social Security on their retirement. Something's got to give. Okay. I, I understand, Senator, and I will send you that information. It's not that I, I, I'm not willing to share it. I'm willing to share it wherever you want to share it. I just don't want to misspeak on, on what those numbers are. And I are. respect that. Uh, okay. thank, thank you. And thank the other panelists for uh, enlightening uh, us on this subject. Thank you, Ranking Member Braun. <clears throat> we could uh, spend a lot more hours.